So when we look at our EKG strip, we're going to look at it and the first thing that we're going to do is form a general impression. Okay, so we're going to look for anything weird, dropped, or missing. Okay, so first things first, I see this weird looking thing right here. So it doesn't look like anything else. Okay, so I'm going to circle that just so I know, okay, pay attention to this. Okay, as I'm looking, nothing else looks abnormal. Everything else looks pretty good. So the next thing that I'm going to do is make sure that our five waves that we talked about are there. Okay, and if you don't know what those waves are, go back and watch that first video. Okay, so we're going to look for our waves. So the first one is the P wave. Okay, so we have a P wave here here, 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 and here. Okay, so we do have our P waves. Okay, so when you're looking at the P waves, you wanna make sure that they're all upright, okay? If it's inverted or missing, okay, if there's no P wave there at all, then we have a different kind of rhythm. But as we're looking at it, we see that it's normal because it's upright, okay? So, our P wave is there. Next, we're going to look for our QRS complex. Okay, so the QRS complex has the Q, the R, and the S wave. So we have one here. Let's change the color. Let's see, let's do orange. So we have one here, 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 and here. Okay, so every P wave has a QRS, so that's perfect. Now we're going to look for our T wave. So we have our T wave here. Okay, so the thing that you got to look out for with the T wave is you also got to make sure that it's upright. Okay, sometimes the T waves can be inverted. Okay, so you want to make sure it looks like this. You want to make sure it's upright. And as you can see, our T waves are upright. So they are good. Okay, let's label our QRS. Okay, so all our waves are there. So, so far, so good. So we just got to make note of this weird looking thing. It does have a name. <laughs> And we're just going to make note of that. So we see this weird looking thing right here. And then we have all our waves. So we have the P, QRS, and the T wave. So that's our general impression. Now we have to actually measure our intervals. So let's do that now. Okay, guys. So I really, really love this website for beginners because you can actually use calipers to practice. Okay, so you can practice your measurements. You know, if you're going to be a monitor tech, this is perfect because you can practice using these calipers and also it'll give you a measurement here. Okay, so you can learn how to read these rhythm strips and you can quiz yourself. So I really love this website. And um, just looking at these options, I I pretty much think that they're quizzing us on what this thing is called, okay? Because we do have an underlying rhythm, but just by looking at the options, I can tell they're quizzing us on what this is. But we're going to go through our steps, and we're going to come up with our rhythm, okay? So first things first, um, we're going to measure our PR interval, okay? So let's measure this one. Let's do this one here. So P and the beginning of our Q. So that is our PR interval. And we said that this has to be between 0.12 and 0.20 seconds. And as you can see, it's 0.16 seconds. So we're good. Okay, next we're going to measure our QRS complex. And this has to be between 
0.06 and 0.10. Okay, and as you can see, it's 0.09 seconds, so we're good with that. Next, we're going to measure our QT interval. So our Q and then the end of our T wave. Okay, so generally you want this to be between 0.35 and 0.44 seconds. So we're good with that one, it's 0.37 seconds. So, so far so good. Now here, we're gonna actually measure our R to R interval. So it's basically from one QRS complex to the next. This is gonna measure the rate and the regularity. Okay, so we have to determine whether it's regular or irregular. And then this is what gives us our heart rate. Okay, so the method that we're gonna use is the 1500 method. Okay, and you can usually use this method if you have an irregular rhythm. And this weird thing here is making our rhythm slightly irregular. So what we're gonna do is count up all these small boxes here, and each big box has five small boxes. Okay, so we're gonna count up our small boxes, and then we're gonna do 1500 divided by those small boxes, okay? So let's see. Let's start here. So we have 5, 10, 15. So this would be 20, but it's not quite 20. So I would say 19 because our, our QRS falls on this one. So I would say 19 small boxes from 1R to 1R. Okay, so I would say 19, and then we would do the math, 1,500 divided by 19, and we would get 78.9, which is basically 79. So our heart rate would be 79 beats per minute. And our rhythm is going to be called a sinus rhythm with PVCs. So this weird looking thing that we noticed earlier is called a PVC. And as you get used to doing these rhythms, you're going to be able to tell what this is right away. Okay, so this is what a PVC looks like. And it's basically an extra beat that's coming from the ventricles. Okay, so something is coming early. This is not supposed to be here, but it's firing an extra beat. Okay, so when we're looking at our options... It's not going to be anything else here, okay? So it's, it's going to be our PVC. It's not a junctional escape rhythm, so it wouldn't be a PJC or a junctional escape rhythm. It's not asystole because we know that's flat line, okay? And that's when we panic. <laughs> it's not MAT, okay? It's not tacky at all, so we wouldn't even consider that. And it's not torsades. This is another scary one. We would know when we see it. So it's not any of those. So I'm going to go with PVCs. Okay, and it's correct. So this is a premature ventricular complex, and we just call it PVCs. So here, it's basically an extra beat that's coming from the ventricles. And it's something that's coming early because it's not supposed to be firing until here, but it's like firing here. So this is called a PVC. And if you have one PVC every now and then, it's not that big of a deal. But if you have more than one and you start having multiple PVCs, um, or you start having every other complex is a PVC, then that's when you start to panic a little bit, okay? Because this can actually lead to VTAC, which is a very dangerous rhythm. So, you know, every once in a while, a PVC is okay, but when you start getting a lot of PVCs, then it could signify a problem. Okay, so this rhythm will be called normal sinus rhythm, with PVCs.
All right, guys, so we're going to do a quick recap of our thought process for measuring our EKG. Okay, so first things first, we're going to do a general impression. We're just going to look for anything that's weird, dropped, or missing. So the weird thing that we found was the PVCs. Okay, so we found our PVC, and that was weird, so we made a note of that. And then we moved on to the next step. We look for our five waves. Okay, so we have the P, the Q, R, S, and the T waves. Okay, and they were all there. So we moved on to the next step where we measured the intervals. So the PR interval normally measures, let's make it green, 0.12 to 0.20 seconds. Okay, so now if it's greater, if it's point, hold on, let's see. If it's point twenty-one or greater, we're gonna call this a heart block. Okay, and it could be first degree, second degree, third degree. It just all depends. Okay. Next, we're gonna measure our QRS. Okay, and as long as it's less than point twelve, we're good. But if it's 0.12 or greater, it's going to be called a bundle branch block, a BBB. Okay, next, our QT, and that should be between 0.35 and 0.44 seconds. Okay, next thing that we're going to measure is our R to R. And let's just say it stands for rate and regularity. Okay, so the rate that we're going to measure is the heart rate, the beats per minute. Okay, so the beats per minute is 60 to 100 for it to be normal. So when we measure the rate, we're basically measuring the distance from one R to another. Okay, so that's our rate. And for the regularity, we're making sure that the distance between the R to R's are the same. Okay, so it was about 3.4 boxes apart. So it was pretty regular. The only thing that made our rhythm irregular was the PVC. Okay, so it's I would say it's pretty regular. Okay, now after we do step four, we have to go to step five and determine the rhythm. So the underlying rhythm is normal sinus rhythm commonly written as SR okay so that is our rhythm so we're just gonna write SR and if there's anything extra like our PVC we would put sinus rhythm with PVC Okay, and this will be our rhythm. So when I'm interpreting my EKG strip, this is what I would write on there, sinus rhythm with PVCs. And that's our rhythm. All right, guys, so this is my thought process when I'm measuring my rhythms. Okay, so make sure you take a screenshot of this and Follow along when I'm measuring my rhythm just to make sure that you understand. Okay, so I will be doing Feel the Rhythm Fridays and I'll post another rhythm next Friday and show you my thought process. Okay, I will see you guys on the next video. Bye.